and the on uh, on the, the, the pressures of life, the hard times of life can easily waste the destiny of that man because there is no roof in that marriage. Yes, sir. Number three, we have the thorny kind of ground. Wives that are thorny, when you are planted in that kind of a ground, they choke life out of you and you'll be unproductive. Praise the Lord. That kind of, of a woman is worldly, has the cares of this world, has the cares of life. All her thinking is what is the, the, the loss of the eye, the loss of the flesh, and the cares of this world. That's what she cares about. And if that is the kind of person you are cleaved to, you are, your life is choked, your destiny is choked. And you be unproductive. Not only you that marriage will be unproductive. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we have the first ground. This first ground has understanding, full understanding. And cleaving to this kind of ground, the good ground. Your potential have a possibility to be maximized and your destiny shall be fulfilled and colorful. Now, the height with, to, that you are going to get to in that marriage is dependent on your grooming of that ground. If you do not groom the ground, you end up 34. But if you properly groom that ground, you can have 60 fold, you can have even 100 fold. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In other words, your destiny is tied to your marriage. Where are you planted? Where are you planted? What kind of ground are you planting? Now listen to me very carefully. Trees don't change position. Once they are planted on a portion of ground, that is where they will be till death do them part. Trees don't shift position. The one who ordained marriage ordained it for the seed to fall to the ground and abide there. Don't tell me you can shift one from one place to the other. You marry this one today, divorce and marry another one, divorce and Now, trees like that don't survive. Praise the Lord. Try it. I do a little garden in my house. And uh, uh, my wife has a uh, way of doing transplanting. <laughs> You know, when she said the tree, we need to be vegetable, you know, in the wrong place. She said, honey, let us transplant this thing. I said, if you transplant this thing, this thing will be it. It will not survive. I said, let us transplant it. Sometimes we go behind that transplant it. By the time we come to look at it, it is <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, it's not every transplanting that is favoring. Yes, sir. Now, when now watch this, watch this, watch this. Things that we see in life should teach us about life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When when you plant pepper, for instance, and the pepper is fruity, you just bring it out, you know, it seed fresh. They are just coming out. They are not ripe yet. And then you say you want to transplant that pepper. What do you think about it? The minute you uproot it, 
and take it to another place and plant it, it will lose the leaves and lose the, the fruits and they will all fall down. The pepper itself will struggle to exist. That's why God said, I hate divorce. Ah. <laughs> Malachi 2 16. I hate it. Why did he hate divorce? Malachi 2 15. Say, God said, I am looking for godly fruit from you. I'm looking for godly fruit from the union. Ah. This thing you are transplanting. You are divorcing and transplanting. You are killing the fruit I'm expecting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The author of marriage did not design marriage to be. Try this and then go. When it's not working, you try that. When it's not working, you try this. He didn't design it that way. The script writer of marriage designed it to be one man, one wife for life. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to. Okay, before we go back to there, let me just show you this. When. You remember Naomi came home with Ruth? Yes, sir. And Ruth was looking for, you know, a, a husband. You know, Ruth approached Boaz in Ruth chapter 3. Ruth approached Boaz according to the counsel of Naomi. Boaz understood, even though Ruth could not say verbally, Boaz understood. And Boaz did something. Because the next uh, kinsman that should have married Ruth, Senior Boaz, Boaz said, let me go and tell him first. If he's interested, we'll marry you. But if not, I will do it. Look at what Boaz said. Ruth chapter 4, from verse 1. Ruth chapter 4, from verse 1. Look at what Boaz said. Then when Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there, and behold, the man of whom Boaz spake came by unto whom he said, Oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down as two. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down as three. And he said unto the king's man, Now me that is come again out of the country of Moab. Selling what? A parcel of land. Which was our brother in the Melex. Now we sell it a parcel of what? Land. Women, you are a parcel of land. God prepared you to be the one that will hold your husband in place. God prepared you as a head that will hold your husband in place. If your husband will succeed, it's in your hand. If your husband will fail, it's in your hand. When the man had a parcel of land, the man got interested. The man wanted to buy a parcel of land. Look at all this. And I thought to advertise this, saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is not to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. He thought it was loud. <laughs> then said God, what day thou buyest the feed of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth, the Moabites, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. When he had that one, he said, no. <laughs> no. no. I thought it was real land. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the kidman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou thy right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Verse 7. Now this was the man that, before my time, you know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, land talks about the woman. You can either be fatal or barren. Praise the Lord. 
Mr. Long. Are you surprised?
The potential will not be maximized. Yes, sir. The counsel now is don't, if you are going to choose a land, don't be like Lot. Don't be like Lot. Yes, sir. Who looked up and saw the beauty of the land and chose with his eyes out. I said, wow. this is big. Wow, what a big. Wow. What a big. Wow. Look at God has finished work on this one. Wow. 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 Don't choose that way. Don't be like Lord. Don't choose that way. Be like Abraham. Yes, sir. And we say, whichever place God leads me to, that is where I'm going to be. That is the problem of this speech. Come on. Man. Whichever place God leads me to, that is where I'm going to be. God knows where you'll be planted and your destiny will shoot forth. Mm. You'll become a global figure. You understand that? Yes, sir. There are people who want to be global figures, who have been trapped. By the wayside kind of life. Right. Yes, sir. Trapped. I'm sorry, it seems as if I am talking to women. I'm not talking to women or to men. I'm talking to women. Sorry, I'm talking, women. To I'm talking to everybody. Everybody. Yes, if you by any means, find yourself planted in a wrong ground. Do you know that is where you are going to be for life? Ah. Till death do you pass. A divorce will be a breaking. It will be a breaking of your death. So, is that how you abide there and manage yourself? What can happen? What can happen if you find yourself in a ground that is unproductive? Is to do what Jesus said to his Lord. He said, When he saw the tree that was not productive, he said, Excuse me, sir, give me one more year. Let me dig around it and put my nail and water it. Praise the Lord. Ah. So you don't have to divorce the ground. Ah. But you can dig around it and manure it yeah. and water it. And the ground will become better. And when you do that, destiny will shoot up. Ah. Praise the Lord. Instead of divorcing that wife, walk on her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Instead of divorcing that wife, what do you do? Walk on her. Amen. Amen. I have to preach to you. Write this thing down. And I preach to you. When you're going to choose, don't choose with the eyes. The Lord bless you. Let's clap for him. Okay, come back here. Let me let me